Minister, was this a lot of time, expense and drama over very little? The curriculum has not changed dramatically. We think the updated curriculum actually uh, has been improved dramatically. I would submit that when we're, adding, when we're adding elements of mental health for the first time in, in kindergarten, with the recognition that young kids in that age increasingly are facing signs of depression and because of bullying and other manifestations in their lives. When we introduce vaping, which did not exist in the 2015 curriculum because more people are turning to vaping as an alternative to smoking. When we introduce new elements on cannabis because in the 2015 version, legalization under the federal uh, liberals didn't exist. And now it's very, it's legalized and increasingly normalized. So we've included robust knowledge about the cognitive impacts, adverse impacts of consumption of drugs, particularly uh, of cannabis. When, it, when we look at concussions, we never had any reference to that physical health element for concussions. We're now one of two provinces in the nation that do that. I would submit that we have made material changes um, to improve the health and safety of kids. The overarching message for me, the priority for me in, in my new capacity as minister, and I know my predecessor shared this conviction, it's about safety. It's about keeping kids safe in and out of the classroom, giving them the tools to remain safe and giving them the self-confidence to identify when victimization takes place. And I think that is a material change. We've improved it, we've maintained some elements, but I think we've materially strengthened every single area and included new elements that didn't exist. Consent but what I was referring to, for example, was the sex ed part of the cur curriculum, gender identity. I'm sure you saw the massive protests by social conservatives who were decrying it, parents didn't want it taught in the classroom. You've changed that element from grade six now it will be taught two years later in grade eight. It's not a massive change. Are you walking a fine line to appease both sides of the equation here? And was it much ado about nothing? A, a lot of you know, hand-wringing about something that really hasn't fundamentally changed that much? I think, well, first off, on identity, uh, it, there's a prompt in grade seven and it's being taught in grade eight. I think the reality is we want young people in this province to know that irrespective of their faith, of their heritage, of their orientation, their economic status, or their place of birth, that they are valued and they're respected. They should feel safe in the classroom. And that's the message I want every child in Ontario to know. And I feel that very strongly because... But th is this all about politics? Yeah. I mean, Doug Ford won the leadership with the help of Tanya Granick Allen, who was vehemently opposed to the sex ed curriculum, she's calling him a liar today, saying he's he's backed down. Is this all politics? You know, I think this is about safety, in fact. I, I appreciate that some would make that argument for me. I don't see the world through hyphenation. I think we're all one citizen. We choose to live in this society, in this country, uh, where the values of freedom, of, of, of difference can be accepted, but we are stronger because of those differences. And I want kids in the classroom to know that, that they're respected. Then why, why push it back two years? What sure. about a kid who's starting to question their sexual identity and orientation? Why wouldn't they be taught this in grade six? Well, in fact, uh, in fact for, for, identi for orientation, as you mentioned, we actually dropped it from grade six to grade five. We moved it earlier on orientation. But identity. Yeah, and because we because we accept that young kids will identify uh, 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 as LGBTQ members and we want them to feel safe. We want them to feel, know that they have a role to play in the classroom. But with identity is later. With respect to, but but the, I think it's important to, under, to appreciate that the curriculum is a scaffolding approach. So in grade three, we start to introduce the idea of visible and invisible differences. We start to introduce that concept that it doesn't matter you know, the person's identity, for example, that they have human dignity, that they should be respected. In grade five, we we moved a year earlier orientation. In grade five, we introduced respect, which deals with almost exclusively homophobia, so that we remove that bias, that prejudice that exists for, for individuals in the classroom. So we are doing this at every step of the way. We teach consent now in grade one, in the earliest years, we move that dramatically down to the 2015 version, just for young kids, it's age appropriate, but for a young child to know that they have boundaries for their bodies and they need to be confident to identify to their authorities to their parents if something bad is happening to them if they're victimized so we think that this document is inclusive it respect it respects parents wishes and to the question of you know why we did this why we undertook this we did this because under the, the former government's version you know we don't believe and i think parents accepted this judgment that it listened to their values that it gave them a say they think that it was, you know, uh, someone imposed on them. And I think the version we've brought forth seeks the license, the perspective, the concerns and priorities of parents that are manifestly in this document from mental health to cyberbullying uh, to cannabis use. In all those areas, we've seen a dramatic strengthening or new additions, and it's a positive step in the right direction. But every child should know that they are respected. This, doc this curriculum, I think, validates that concept. It, was it a fine wire balancing act, trying to sort of find the middle ground to appease 
parents who are on either side of the, the issue and, and have very different opposing views on it? I just think all parents in Ontario overwhelmingly could feel that this document, I think, will respect their child. If they have an exceptionality, a disability, uh, if they are a member of a certain uh, minority community, if they're new Canadians, every child in this document should see themselves. And that was my vision, that was my predecessor's vision, it was the Premier's vision, and I think we fulfilled that mandate by releasing this today. Would you agree that this is very similar to the Liberal curriculum, but you've made some tweaks and, in your mind, some improvements, minor improvements? Yeah, I would say this is a dramatically improved, strengthened version that manifestly is different. It includes new elements like uh, cannabis, uh, knowledge uh, that didn't exist given the legalization. It includes new elements from vaping to opioid use uh, to consent in the earliest years, mental health in, in, in kindergarten. I mean, I think it's actually a different document. It is a better document. It is an inclusive roadmap for, for knowledge when it comes to physical health in the province of Ontario and sexual health in the province of Ontario. And I think most dramatically different is it seeks the, the perspective, the wisdom, and the ideas that parents gave us guidance on. That's what I think differentiates us. We sought the priorities of parents, we listened, and we've improved, we built a plan that I think builds, that, that actually fulfills that objective.